Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Bloodborne. Today we're gonna enter the heart of the Cathedral Ward and go after a new boss this time. And we're also gonna be continuing our quest to hit the fabled R2 charge attack on the stake driver, which I have a few ideas on how to hit. Let's do it. Oh my god, that's the wrong attack. I have to transform it. Oh, also, look at his lantern. Ah, it disappeared. Uh, we'll take another crack at that in a second. Oh, this one's casting magic. That's because I'm above 15 insight, and the world starts changing. Enemies start changing, too, at uh, 15 insight. That's why his lantern's covered in eyeballs. There we go. There we go. Oh, man, even off the parry stagger, it's not enough. Stake driver's still really, really good, though. Even if that charged R2 is hard as hell to set up because how long it takes to charge. I am gonna hit this, though. I'm... I'm becoming really obsessed with hitting this attack, because it's so awesome. Oh, I can get you. This is an undead giant. Oh no, don't turn around, don't. God, oh, just keep walking. Okay, no, if I can get behind him, I can hit this attack. I can land it. Oh, here we go. The range is like point blank on it too, that's so cool. Ooh! And it's, uh, it's no slouch for damage for as hard as it is to hit. It'll tear some shit apart. Yeah! I love this! It's so good! Oh, man. I love the stake driver. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, it's like a gunpowder-fueled punch that plunges this bladed stake into an enemy. It's awesome. I'm gonna keep playing around with the stake driver for a little bit longer before I go back to, uh, Kirk Hammer and Ludwig's. Okay, so we have one ogre uh, patrolling over to the right. Um, I'm gonna try to draw him out. This one is a club. Oh, I- that was way too early. Okay. I don't have a lot of room to back up, so I gotta hit a parry. There we go. What is he- That's- it looks like some gnarled tree stump or something that he's- wielding like a club. Okay, maybe I can backstab him. Uh, oh man, I forget which form it is I hit that has a really good charge attack. I hope it's this one. Uh, the crows can start fucking me up here. Oh no! It was the wrong attack anyway. Okay. Either way, the stake driver's still awesome, so we're gonna tear him apart with it. There we go, there we go. I love this weapon, it's so fun. There's nothing better than playing around with new weapons. People who just stick with the starting weapons are missing out. A monocular! Oh yeah, in previous games you get the boring ass binoculars. Here you get a pimp ass monocle to look off into the distance with. It's it's the same function, it's just way cooler because it's a monocle. Yeah, now we can just keep that on our item slot. Get a good look around it. Bunch of different stuff. What are you guarding, bro? You're guarding uh, bloodstone shards. That's cool. There is a. Uh, there should be a scurrying beast around here. Just past this guy with a ball and chain. Uh, if I go for it, I'll probably get messed up. But I don't actually see it anyway. Did it just run away already? Okay then. Uh, if I'm not gonna get a skull beast out of this anyway, I'll just kill Cool Hand Luke over here instead. And oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the best. Does like half their holy shit. Holy, holy shit. Holy shit. These enemies are so dangerous. Look how much damage this weapon does, though. And how fast it is. The only downside to the stake driver is its range. Its range and the, uh, the, the slow charge time of the R2. But that's only this form's R2 that takes that long. Uh, the other, when you transform it, the other charge are to, uh, just really quick. More bloodstone shards, I love that. Love that. Down here, uh, is gonna be a dead end, but it has a treasure chest, I wanna say, and a lot of fine smashables, which conceal nothing. And I think this is a bl uh, beware of ambush. No, there's no ambush here. There's just a closed door. And I don't actually know when you get to open that one up. 
I was so obsessed with uh, the stake driver that I ignored the eyeballs all over the the lanterns for the the church members. Man, the the one thing that I can't wait for the guide for is actually knowing enemy names. Uh, the white mask church members who had the uh, the eyeballs all over their lanterns. Eyes are becoming a really commonly recurring motif. Oh, and through here, uh, we can use that emblem that we purchased for 10,000 Blood Echoes. This is the other way into uh, the Central Cathedral Ward, instead of dropping down from the balcony accessible by the uh, Church Workshop. Uh, so, we have the Insight Icon, which is an eyeball. Woo, this guy's got flame sprayer. Uh, the church members all have cloths over their eyes, like the cleric beast, the, uh, the guy in the beginning, gas coin. Uh... We have the eyeballs all over the lanterns, we have the umbilical cord description, and even inside itself, like, from that description we got the phrase eyes on the inside, which seems to be a pun? about how you literally have eyes on the inside of your head with higher insight. Uh, we'll see more of that later on. We'll see what that phrase actually means. Uh, these giant undead uh, church giants, <clears throat> if you wait for them to swing and you look carefully at their legs, it's hard when you're locked onto them because uh, the camera angles upwards, but if you look at their legs when they swing, there's a little bone that is exposed and it pops out when they uh, when they move their legs around to swing the axe. And if you hit that bone when it pops out, you can crumple them and get a visceral attack. Uh, so we have a whole bunch of Madman's knowledge littered around this graveyard. By the way, do you recognize this graveyard? You should. Because when we were up top on the workshop spire above Erden Chapel, I pointed out a round plaza full of graves. This is it. This is it. We saw it from the top of Erden Chapel, and now we're here. More madman's knowledge. Uh, there... Wow, goddamn, there's so much of it here. This is good for probably like six or seven insight. Uh, that gate is locked at the moment. That's gonna be a shortcut later. There is another route you can go from here. Uh, it's gonna wind up in a dead end, but there's some pretty cool stuff going on. Uh, like a brain sucker and a crow over here on the left. Sometimes, sometimes you can find the brain sucker attacking the crow. Okay, let's try. Wow, that didn't do much. Okay. That is so amazing. The moveset on Ludwig's is incredible. It's everything you could hope for. There's a stab, there's an overhead, there's a horizontal combo. Everything you can want out of a, a moveset for a weapon. It's got really good range, it's got super high damage, it's only a little bit slow and stamina consuming. That's about it. You should be, uh... Oh no, Antidote. I thought it was Twin Bloodstone Shards. I know there's some around here. <laughs> the password. The password. We don't actually have a password yet, so we'll have to come back for that later. That's why that terminates in a dead end for now. Those burn up windmills, is that... Are they part of Old Yarnum? Is that what we're overlooking up here? I think it is. Oh, okay. That's really cool. So the world is interconnected in this really, really cool way. Not only do we have tons and tons of shortcuts that lead all over the place, uh, we're also constantly getting previews of where we're going to wind up in the distance. Oh, look at this baby carriage. Uh, that's gonna be actually important. That's another recurring motif that I haven't pointed out, but baby carriages. And considering the item description of the uh, umbilical cord that we got in the abandoned workshop about the uh, old great ones seeking surrogates because their children are stillborn, 
that's, uh, you can see why that might be an important motif. I'm gonna clear these streets out and go ahead and do that before I talk to any NPCs locked up in the houses so I don't get ambushed. A lot of these villagers with the, uh, the sickles, they will poison you. Oh, God, that's... Damn it, I had to dodge the bullet so I didn't get the, the visceral attack. Uh... Man, I love the enemies attacking you through this really, really dense blanket of fog. Okay, we got him. Holy shit! That bullet passed straight through that... Oh my god, he passed, like, right through that little crack between the coffin and the wall. That's really good. Okay. Streets are, uh... I think more or less cleared out now, so I can talk to NPCs in safety. Black church set. Black church set. Let's check that out real quick, actually. Um... Where are you? Attire of the Healing Church Hunters. The Holy Shawl symbol of the Healing Church Hunters proudly on their back. Flutters proudly on their back. There we go. Most healing church hunters are elementary doctors who understand the importance of early prevention of the scourge achieved by disposing of victims and even potential victims before signs of sickness manifest themselves. Their black attire is synonymous with fear. So these hunters disposed of bodies even before the citizens start showing signs of the plague. I'm off during hunt, so if that's what you're here for, I'll leave you to your own devices. If that doesn't do it, come back in the morning, darling. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. You're a hunter, right? Might you know the safe place? The night is long, and I've very little of the incense left. Please, there must be some nice place to run off to. Oh, thank you, darling. Maybe I'll see you there. <laughs> Outsider who's come to join the hunt. What a pathetic idea. You what? What, do you think I'm a beast? Well, maybe I think you're a beast. And step away from my car, Tom. Ah, oh, enough of you. What, you think this is funny? Well, I certainly don't, so be gone with you. I'll have nothing to do with your beast stunts. Well, what's this two bit nonsense you're peddling? I heard you told that wench about some shelter. Well, she's a damn fool to trust an outsider. Now, why? Well, her sort's probably just fixing to feed some of your coin. <laughs> uh, all right. What crafty lies does the outsider have today? You think I'm an easy mark? Yeah? Well, give me your best shot. This guy doesn't trust anyone, including you, so he goes to the opposite location you tell him about. So I'm going to tell him to go to Yusefka's clinic, so he winds up at Erdin Chapel. Got reverse psychology, this guy. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Too sharp for that, bollocks. I know it's outsiders. Even their lies are predictable. What? Yeah, fine. Come on, show me what you've got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Too sharp for that, bollocks. This is why it's important to exhaust all dialogue and check back on NPCs often. The first NPC was Ariana the prostitute, and the second one was the skeptic. I would love to know what's going on inside these two houses. <laughs> Praise you. Praise the old damn church. And then the best of luck I've seen. Best luck of all. <laughs> <laughs> 
that guy kind of just sounds drunk. He sounds drunk and sarcastic, like, yeah, whatever, praise the church, blah, blah, blah. Just leave me alone. Kind of like that. Uh, up here, I got an interesting little sequence to deal with. Uh, so you can take cover uh, behind the gate and the stairs here and kind of draw away all the other enemies without getting shot. And then you can work on Gunner in the back. Ooh. Yeah! Oh, it just carves through him. I love this moveset. And that L2 is amazing! Amazing! Ludwig's greatsword is so fun. I mean, I'm saying this about all the weapons, but it's true. Yeah, oh god, there's another one. Hold up. Hold up, hold up. Okay, now we can L2, or uh, R1 up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we haven't encountered a bad weapon so far. Which is really important, considering how few weapons there actually are in Bloodborne. It's important that all of them have a really, really strong moveset. Um, that they all have a really unique identity. And I think for the most part that's accomplished. There are a couple of weapons where some of their forms share movesets. Uh, like you saw the, the Kirk Hammer and the Threaded Cane. Both of their short sword forms kind of share a moveset. Uh, but for the most part they have such an... Even beyond just gameplay mechanical elements like movesets and damage and stuff like that. The Kirk Hammer... Oh, I like this vista. The Kirkhammer has its own identity just based on looks and animation and stuff. It's got a character to it, you know? A watchman of Bergenworth guards the gate with a password, the sacred adage of the Grand Cathedral. Uh, that's the guy who was asking us for a password at that dead end earlier. And uh, we learned that he is a watchman of Bergenworth, a college that we have heard of before from Alfred. Alfred told us that Bergenworth was once uh, a thriving town of scholars uh, and a college, which was at some point sealed off by the Healing Church. Uh, now that we've come this way, you see that this is the other side of the gate from the central graveyard plaza. And by pulling this lever, we now open up a shortcut directly through that central area, the rounded area. Uh, I think there's maybe fire paper over here? Thick cold blood. I think there's fire paper somewhere around here. Could be wrong about that. But we're about to open a much more important shortcut. We get back-to-back -back shortcuts in this one. Uh, and it might... Woo, hold on. There are two of you? At least two of you. But you're not... Oh, god damn it messed up by magic. This is what I meant when I said the game becomes a little bit harder uh, once you start reaching higher levels of insight. Uh, because when you start seeing the world for what it really is and the true horrors of this world, uh, you get not only cosmetic changes like the eyeballs on the lantern, you get enemies who are now much stronger, more capable. Enemies who start casting magic and taking on new forms. Uh, we haven't seen one of the magics employed by them. Ah! Didn't... I should have taken two back steps. Alright. Yo, what up? So good. Oh my god, I love it. Not quite in range. Ah! Uh, oh god. This could not be going more poorly. Because we got this fucker in the back just spamming away magic. There we go. That is a point-blank AoE. Wow. I'm, I'm just sucking right now. Take him out at any cost. Come on now. I love this mage you have to navigate. This like Morrigan fireball maze. Uh, so look where this is. We've taken this path before. We found the wooden shield up here on the other side of that gate. So we have a super quick shortcut leading up to the, the Grand Cathedral of the area. Oh, we also have thick cold blood down here. Uh, there was a ladder I could have taken before. I want to come up here and clear this place real quick. By the way, his sight... Oh, plunging attack! We still got those! Uh, this might not be the best 
place I could possibly be. Uh, a matter of fact, I should be dead. Because we got someone shooting at me with an, I think an Evelyn? Ooh. Oh my god, how did I survive that? Um. Yeah, okay, so we are back down here. And I am going to take that ladder now, I guess. I wanted to try to get up there to clear a little bit out. I guess we'll come back for round two in a minute. Uh, up here, what do we find? I think Numbing Mist. Uh, Numbing Mist is important for the boss fight, and it's also a really good PvP item, because when you throw it at someone, it prevents them from healing. Uh, it's kind of like... Oh, uh, what were they called in uh, Dark Souls? Blanking on the name of the item. Oh, well, I've had that brain fart, so, oh well. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, though. They stop enemies from healing, uh, including enemy players. And that just dumps us out back on the stairs near the shortcut. Uh, that balcony over there on the right that I just passed is where we came out uh, to grab an item from the elevator. Back when we took the, uh, the little shortcut from the abandoned uh, workshop. Or I mean the, uh, the, the church workshop. Can I get it? Yeah, I can. I still haven't managed to hit his exposed bone in his leg to stagger him. i try for that. It's hard to do when you're locked onto him. I should probably unlock, but, nah. It's not that big a deal. Okay, so we still have... I know there's someone patrolling around still. There you are. This guy is a pain in the ass. His gun is really good. It's a sawed-off shotgun. Can do a lot of damage. It's not so bad when there aren't that many enemies around him, but when you're trying to fight, like, the, the dude with the glowing sight, which, by the way, if I didn't mention, is another insight effect. If you're below 15 insight, his sight does not glow. Uh, I think it buffs him a little bit. Uh, if you're trying to fight him and, like, the, the church giant and... All the other enemies, he can really pile on a lot of damage. The guy with the sawed off. Uh, these guys with crucifixes, they're a lot heftier enemies. Uh, I think they actually gain a little bit of health at high insight, too. They seem more sturdy now than what I'm used to. Uh, also, their crucifixes glow at 15 insight. The higher insight you go, the more cool stuff you will see. And, uh,. Something very special is going to happen at 40 Insight, which I'll make sure I do my best to show off. Uh, so real quick, before you enter the uh, upper layer of this uh, level that leads to the Grand Cathedral, you see it splits off into two paths. This path over here leads to an area called Hemwick Lane, uh, and I just want you to pay attention to the lighting right now in the sky. As you can see, it's about sunset right now. Uh, so there's still this warm orange glow lighting the area. Uh, we're not going to go into Hemwick Lane just yet. We'll save that area. Uh, it's an optional area, but you get some really good at the end of it. We'll save that for later. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go back and cash in all of my souls. Actually, why don't I at least open the door? Uh, and then there's a path that branches off to the right. We'll see where that leads later. I'm going to open the door real quick. But, I'm gonna turn the camera so we don't spoil what's up the stairs, because it's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna head back and cash in, because I find the boss of this area to be pretty hard, and I personally struggle with it a lot. So, we'll resume when I get back, when I get done spending all these uh, blood echoes I've acquired. Alright, I'm back. I've spent almost all my souls, which is good, because I'm probably gonna die a couple times uh, on the boss coming up. And now I can show how quick this little run back is with all the shortcuts open up and uh, skipping the enemies. Which uh, is pretty easy to do. Except for the two at the top of the stairs with the crucifix. But there's a way to manipulate their AI uh, to make them kind of easy to bypass. So I'll recover my stamina before I sprint out past the giant. Sometimes he behaves a little weird. If you walk halfway up the stairs and then start sprinting uh, at the halfway mark, they'll stop and point at you. And then they won't follow you beyond the threshold of the door. So we can slowly, dramatically make this awesome, breathtaking ascent. Exactly what you want when approaching the inside of this cool, grand cathedral. 
But look, look at this. These statues are giant, emaciated bodies with porous squid heads. Maybe a tribute to the Lovecraftian Great Ones. And let's listen for a sec, she's praying. I'll put her full prayer in the description. Amelia I found to be really hard, she's kind of my demon, so I'm gonna quiet down for most of the fight and get serious. Um, I popped those Madman's Knowledge before I came in, so I'd hit 20 Insight. Because of 20 Insight, you can hear her chanting uh, mid-fight. Back off. And right in the head. Uh, her head is one of a many weak points she has. Ah, one of many weak points she has. Uh, her head takes more damage. If you hurt her head enough, she'll recoil and give you a few seconds to lay into her. And then you can also do that. Her legs and her left arm are also weak points. If you do enough damage to any of them, uh, she'll crumple and she'll go on her knees and let you lay into her. At this point in the fight, uh, she really hates fire. She can also start healing herself. So if you throw a numbing mist at her, that works really well to prevent her from healing up. I can't believe how well this is going. Oh my god, I can't believe how well that went. That's actually a little anticlimactic. I swear, she's destroyed me in the past. I was legit worried about Ah Miyazaki and his pendants. I was honestly really worried about this fight because it took me like four hours to kill her on my first time through this. I, I, I usually have a really, really hard time with Vicar Amelia. Uh, so I guess I'll waste some time by showing off the fire effect from the fire paper since it didn't expire. I love the embers that come off it. I love the way the fire blurs when you're moving. It looks really, really cool. Uh, so enough dicking around. There's uh, there's a skull on the altar she was praying near. And if you go up and you examine the skull, something really cool happens. Uh, before I examine that, I did get a gold pendant from her, so we want to... Where's... There we go. Check it out. Pendia Vicar Amelia used to change into a blood gem which fortifies weapons. This pendant passed down among the vicars who head the healing church it is a reminder of the cautionary adage, words that will open the gates of Bergenworth. So that's where we're going to learn the password. Also, that tells us that she was the, the current head of the healing church. Master Willem, I've come to bid you farewell. Oh, I know, I know. You think now to betray me. No, but you will never listen. I tell you, I will not forget our adage. We are born of the blood. Made men by the blood. Undone by the blood. 
our eyes are yet to open. Fear the old blood. I must take my leave. So the adage that acts as a password to open the way to Bergenworth is fear the old blood. And we will uh, decipher what that cutscene was all about next time. For now, thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.